adding a second parrot. Is your parrot needing a friend? How will adding a second parrot go? What kind of parrot should you add? <laughs> That's some questions that Bella and I are asking today. Hey guys, I'm Kaylin, the author of The Parrot Blue Spawn and the new book, Get to Know African Grey and Cape Parrots. Be sure to get your copies on Amazon. If you are here to learn the answer to some of these questions, just like one of my YouTube members, then you're in the right place. Bella and I are going to talk to you about Bella, about whether or not she's an easy parrot, and what it's like to take on a second bird. She's sort of the second, our Major Mitchell being the first. In this example, in this one example, if you knew that this was Bella and you knew that we adopted her with a naked belly, then you're used to hanging out. Thank you guys for being here. I love my fans almost as much as I love my 22 plus species. Bella's giving you an idea of what I wanted her to. She's being loud. Let's get started. First, I'm going to say that one of the difficulties with adding a second parrot is that there is some gamble involved. We took on a galah and it's like, hmm, they can be really loud. The first time I heard a galah scream, I thought someone was dying in the other room. I am not kidding. Seriously, the sound was just, blah, blah. I mean, I just, I was like, oh my God. And I dropped everything and rushed to see what the noise was. And it was the galah. It wasn't her. Um, when you bring home a parrot, especially a second parrot, it's tricky. When you get two parrots at the same time, they tend to go like this. They keep each other company. And if you spend time with them, it usually doesn't matter, depending on the species. It usually doesn't matter. You usually can bond with them too, not a problem. When you bring one home and then you wait and you bring another one home, things change. So um, in case Bella has given anyone the impression that she is sweet, fluffy, beautiful, cuddly, loving, quiet. I want to bust that myth. Yes, she actually is a lot of those things, although she was just being loud. And I'm glad that wasn't as loud as she can really be. That just wasn't really bad. And you heard, it is not melodious. Cockatoos uh, are not songbirds. There are songbirds and then there's like on the other end of the spectrum are the squawky sounds that can hurt your eardrums of some cockatoos or maybe a lot of cockatoos. Um, Bella is destructive. We try to not let her fly upstairs because she eats the walls and the wooden banister. OMG. Can I think of anything more expensive for her to eat? I mean, how do you replace a wooden banister? I, I don't want to know. I just don't want to know. The walls, like anything wood, my antiques, Oh my, frankly, guys, most of my parrots don't eat these things, but she does. So when you bring a second bird home, there is some gamble involved. If you bring a galah home, please don't be fooled. I think this is an old lady or at least older. And what I'm really saying when I mean that, when I say that, what I really mean is she's more chill, man. She's more calm. Sure, she eats wooden banisters and walls, Oh, cabinets, but she's chill. If she were young and full of spike and vinegar, I don't want to know. Uh, I've seen some videos where people have had to like almost replace the whole inside of their house. It's, it seems unreal. It seems completely unreal. And if you watch my videos, you're going to think my house is in order, but those videos might be pre Bella. Is she like super, super, super eating everything? No. Are they all? Yeah. Yeah, in other words, no, she's not the one who's eaten all the damage to my antiques and walls and yeah, they, but that's what parrots do. So that is in case you're thinking of getting a galah and I just want you to have an idea of what's coming. Is she sweet? Yes. Is she loud? Yes. Does she eat the house? Yes. Do I regret getting her? No, but I know how to handle her. I have a little bit of experience after so many species. I do have 
a little bit of hands-on experience. Um, bringing home a second pair. So one of my YouTube members has a Amazon that is a year, year and a half, I forget exactly, and they're looking at getting a second one. Lorenza is bonded to me. Lorenza chose me and she is like this with me. That bird would do me no harm. That bird would um, totally guard me. My dad had said that in some Latin American countries, they take on Amazons as like guard dogs kind of thing because they bond and they're so loyal to their one person. And I think they would use their lives to defend that one person kind of thing because that's what they would do in the wild. They have that one bonded pair. Do they take on another friend? Are they like Conyers where they can be like this and you can be in the picture? A wonderful third wheel that balance out, balances out a trike? No, Amazons are not tricycle riders. They are bicycle riders. There are two members in that close bond, period. There are two. If you were to get another Amazon of similar size, similar temperament, because that's what we're after when we're gonna add a second one to increase the chance that they will bond and that your parrot will have a parrot to keep it company, um, then you have to recognize that if they bond, they will like you, um, Ursulus and Henry, who are now like this. And I'm so glad because Ursulus really needed a buddy and he was trying to buddy people and it just, you know, it, it wasn't working. He ha wasn't finding his bond. So now that he and Henry are like this, I can pick them up. They'll both step up. Um, Ursulus will sometimes let me pet him. It's not the same. It's not as bonded between he and I because he has that bond with Henry. However, I wake up and I do my yoga. I do the dishes. I get birdie breakfast going. The list goes on until I get blue in the face. And so I don't have time to just sit and pet and pet and pet. Therefore, the fact that Ursulus has someone else who preens him, I couldn't ask for more. The fact that Ursulus has another Amazon who's in the cage with him and they are best friends. And now he obviously feels like he has a flock and he has his place where he belongs, ideal. If I could spend more time with both of them, do I think they would be more friendly with me? Yes, I do. But I do realize it wouldn't be the same as it is with, for example, Abby and Markle. Abby and Markle, my green cheek conyers, are bonded. They have had several clutches of babies. That's how bonded they are. And yet, I just actually put um, Abby, I mean Markle, back in the cage with Abby because we just gave them some seeds. It is the seed time of year. And so um, I did get her to just very easily, happily step into the cage, but she had flown onto my shoulder, which is what she always does. She, and Abby had been out and had been with my daughter. My daughter put, you know, I think Abby went in the cage like, hey, it's tree time. So my daughter and I are like, yes, yes it is. It's tree time. It is winter. This is the time when there are seeds. And so you do get seeds, no problem. They are, bonded but they they fly on us they communicate with us they go on um they go in their cage fine they you know they are tricycles there's two of them and they don't mind a third wheel out of a human they don't mind a fourth wheel they're fantastic that way so some of it is exceedingly species dependent some of it is dependent on the parrot size some of it is dependent on the parrot's mood and history so with bella for example she wants to befriend our Major Mitchell. It's obvious. She'll come closer to the Major Mitchell. And the Major Mitchell is 25% bigger than she is. And the Major Mitchell kind of freaks out. The crest goes up and, and the Major Mitchell's like, Rah! <laughs> and we're like, you know, we don't know why Diva is like that. They are both rescues, so we don't know what their history is. That's just the way it is. Diva, I mean, sorry, Bella does not want to really befriend anyone else. She, she and I have a little bond, which I'm really grateful for, and I look forward to that deepening. However, she's allergic to my macaw, and what I mean by that is she does not want to come out of her cage. She does not want to come anywhere near wherever the macaw is. If the macaw's out, Bella's not really interested in being out, and then she wants to fly upstairs to eat my uh, upstairs walls and get away from the macaw. My um, Cape Parrot Quantum likes Bella, because when he was a baby in a store, right next to him or somewhere in his proximity, there was a galah. I know this because when he first came home, he made galah sounds. Because Cape parrots are similar to African greys, they can pick up sound, they can pick up noise, they can talk. 
And so if he's mimicking a galah, it's because he's heard a galah and he was friends with her. So he would like to befriend Bella, but Bella doesn't have the same history he does. So she, she's like, I don't know what your deal is. You're coming into my cage, please don't. <laughs> Bella doesn't really want to befriend my other parrots. Maybe someday she'll find a parrot that she likes, but not so far. My point, if you bring home a second parrot, there is some gambling involved. The very best thing is to do it when your parrot is young or when you're getting a parrot, you get two at the same time. If they're young, they're more likely to click and hit it off. They may not hit it off from the first moment you put them together. With, it depends on the bird. With parrotlets, it's more likely to happen. With green cheek conures, it's more likely to happen when you put them into new territory. That means a new cage that no one knows or a cage that's been like completely cleaned. Uh, all the toys taken out, everything taken out, scrubbed down and everything kind of started afresh so that it's like a new cage so that they're both walking into new territory. If you have an Amazon who is a year, year and a half, Ursulus was, um, I think he was like, two or so when we got Henry, because he's four, no, three. Um, they, they were just, I, I observed, they were in their own cages and they clearly could come together and they are housed together. I only believe in putting a parrot in a cage by itself when it is not bonded and would be unsafe to be with another parrot. Parrots in the wild are always within proximity of their flock or depending on the species, they're like this on a perch next to their mate because they derive warmth and the sense of safety and security from their other parrot. It is their companion. It is their tribe like it would be to us. Um, maybe with your spouse or mate, you sleep in separate rooms or separate beds. I don't, most of the people I know, I don't think I know anyone who doesn't sleep in the same bed with their um, spouse or their mate. Parrots are the same. So, um, I, I can't, I, 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 my heart goes out to parrots who, um, like if you have two green cheek conures and they're not in the same cage, um, I'm sure they get used to it. I don't think it's the end of the world. It is not necessarily what is going to meet their deeper needs for that connection, for that companionship. Hi, land shark. Do you want to come? Do you want to come here? Hi, sharky. Are you coming to say hi? Land shark. <laughs> I, um, we adopted at the same time we adopted our major Mitchell and she was already plucked and so she is half naked, huh, sweetie? You're half naked bird. Stop plucking. Stop plucking. Okay. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, you know, people, when people, uh, say, ask me why my parrotlets are so sweet because parrotlets, they're a more aggressive species. They are not a pacifist species, budgies, cockatiels, my linnies, the red rumps, they are pacifists. They're really sweet birds. They don't really, they're not aggressive with other birds. I don't know about other cockat or other um, galahs. Bella is more of a pacifist. She is not aggressive. I don't know if that's true for all galahs. Um, but if you have, um, So when people ask me why my parrotlets, who can be aggressive, um, green cheek conures can be aggressive, you know, when they say, how do you get your parrots to be so friendly? One of the ways is I make sure that their needs are met. They need to be in a flock. And if they're in separate cages, they're not sharing territory. It's like you, you know, living next door to your family, but not in the same house. I can't imagine not being in the same house um, with my husband and my daughter. And so if you put my husband and my daughter in houses right next to me, would I keel over? No, of course not, but I wouldn't be the same. Would I be perfectly functional? Yes, but not exactly the same. Some of my spirit would be diminished. If you want to increase your parrot's spirit, then one of the best things you can do is get them a friend and if it's a different species, for example, if you get like a golden conure, because we want the same kind of temperament and Amazons are really loud and they can, they can be kind of active. Um, but they are, you know, they, they don't, um, 
like an African gray, you could try that, but African grays are more chill. So like, I don't feel like that would be a good match. It doesn't mean it wouldn't work. It means that's not where I would hedge my bet. Um, so whatever you do, it, you can put them cage by cage, especially if they're two different species. And it used to be that my golden conure and my orange winged Amazon were like this. She would like, my golden conure would step on his head. I mean, he literally let her walk all over him. So I felt very safe putting them together. But if you don't feel very, 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 very safe, then you can have them in separate cages. And that's, you know, it's a matter of safety has to come first. And then if you can have them safely, happily, without being stressed out, being in another cage with another parrot, that's the best choice. So, um, yes, when you bring a second parrot home, it is a gamble. Yes, if you have an Amazon, you are going to lose some of the intimacy, but it may be worth the trade-off. And you're still going to have the connection with both of the Amazons or whatever species you pick. If you pick another species, you might have two parrots that are kind of needy because when they don't have another one of their species or one that they can really, really bond with, and generally speaking, they bond more with their own species than they will with another species, then it isn't a guarantee, but it is likely that you might wind up with two that are more needy. Just kind of the way the cookie crumbles. And yes, the sooner you get a friend for them, the better, because the the more, uh, either the older they are or the more they are already set in their ways, you are already their flock, they're already needy, they're already the only one getting the attention kind of thing, they're already the only burb on the block, then, you know, now we have to change everything. We're bringing in another bird, which is another big change, but we're also changing like how we distribute our attention, we're changing how they're supposed to behave, we're changing how they're supposed to relate. And it gets to be a lot. So the sooner you do it, the better. And then if you do, you can put them cage by cage. And if given enough time, they are very, very likely to get along when they're the same species. And generally speaking, if they're not too set in their ways, they should be able to adapt. In Emerald's case, for example, we never got another hands macabre because she just pays no attention to all the other birds in the house. She likes that they're there. She'll steal food from them if she can, but that's about it. She doesn't, you know, she just doesn't engage with any of them. No one her size, no one her temperament, nothing at all. So make sure that you look at that carefully so that you wind up with the best flock that suits you and suits your birds. Thank you for joining me in this blissful video. I hope that it was a lot of help for you. If you want some awesome merch, make sure to go to shop.parablist.com where my daughter has some awesome illustrations and we turn them into t-shirts and things like that. One of my other favorites is my glass cutting board. I really like that. It's one of her illustrations. If you have any questions or comments, please be sure to put them below and then I will catch you in the next feathered video. If you want to become a part of the YouTube membership, please visit parrotbliss.com and you will see groups highlighted and you can click there and join. I will catch you in the next pink video.